All right, today we're gonna to be comparing this BICU PLA High Rebound 3D printed airless basketball to a leather composite indoor ball and an outdoor ball. If you haven't seen one of these before, Wilson debuted the Gen 1 airless basketball. Ever since that moment, 3D printing enthusiasts have been obsessed with trying to recreate that basketball. And thankfully, filament makers have been developing new plastics to help us on that journey. And now they've been able to recreate the bounce of a normal basketball, I thought it was time to try one out. As a previous university level basketball player and 3D printing enthusiast, I feel I'm uniquely qualified to put this thing through the ringer. So on Black Friday, I ordered a roll and it is unlike any PLA I've ever used. It's much more squishy like a TPU, so I dried it out just in case. I decided to go with the party lime design as it looked like it had better shooting grooves and grip and I'll link it below for anyone interested. The print itself was mesmerizing to watch and it took over two days. It seemed to have a few issues with the overhangs but overall it printed nearly perfectly on the first go. It came right off the build plate with ease but it did not separate from the support so easily. I found that a pair of pliers was the best way to pull it off, and wow did it ever feel good to finally get this thing separated. Then I used a polishing bit on my rotary tool to clean up the overhangs until they were all smooth. Then I made sure to inflate my old spalding to 8 psi for this test. All right, first up here is the grip test. I'm using a fairly new Spalding TF Legacy basketball that I could easily palm it and the grip felt really nice. It was soft, it was smooth, and it stuck to my fingers. Whereas the 3D printed basketball was slippery, hard, and I had no chance of actually palming this ball. The outdoor ball is right in the middle. I can palm it, but barely, and it's definitely more grippy than the airless ball. But before we can finish this test, I wanted to give the airless ball its best chance possible. So I pulled out some Plasti Dip, which is like a spray paint that makes things feel rubberized. And it significantly improved the grip to the point where when it was fresh, I could palm the ball, although it wore off pretty quickly. So I'm not sure how much of a long-term solution this is. Next up is a bounce test, and you can see right away that the bounce is quite similar. The rebound is just a slight bit less than the Spalding, and you can see in the close-up slow motion that it is actually bouncing and warping in the same way as the normal basketballs. As for dribbling and doing crossovers, it actually felt really good, almost as good as the normal ball. The weirdest thing was the sound is so quiet that I sometimes lost track of the ball, not hearing where it was coming to next. Does that make sense? And now a quick backspin test. You can see that the airless ball does spin back to you pretty easily, but it's just not quite as far as the normal basketball, but a surprisingly good result on this one. Now here's where things really get interesting, in the shooting test. The ball feels nice enough to shoot. The grooves are actually okay. I feel confident shooting the ball. However, I quickly realized that everything I was shooting fell flat and I was airballing almost everything. Even when I was really pushing the ball and really accentuating my shooting form, it didn't make a difference. I just kept airballing and I could not understand it at first. And this is the big problem that no one is talking about. The airless basketball is fundamentally flawed. You see, it's a physics problem, specifically the fluid dynamics. It's something known as the Magnus effect. As a basketball spins, it interacts with the surrounding air differently on the top and on the bottom. On the bottom side where the ball spins in the same direction as its forward motion, air moves faster, reducing pressure. And on the top side, air moves slower, increasing pressure. And this pressure difference generates an upward force, 
which helps extend the range of the shot. In comparison, the airless basketball has a porous lattice structure and it disrupts the smooth airflow needed for the Magnus effect to function effectively. If you can imagine the airless basketball spinning through the air, each one of those holes filled with lattices is just grabbing the air, slowing it down and making it drop instead of making it lift up into the air. For this reason, it is a terrible basketball for shooting three pointers and I even noticed it at the free throw line. Which brings us to safety. And I noticed this while passing the ball to someone else in the gym. This ball is quite hard. So getting hit in the face with it in an accidental play would not be fun. Which brings us to durability. This basketball excels outside. Its grip is comparable to an outdoor ball. Its durability seems like it will last longer than the grip on an outdoor ball because they wear out quite fast. However, what I noticed shooting in one degree Celsius is that the bounce didn't bounce as high in the cold temperatures. So I'm curious to see how high temperatures affect the bounce as well. Thankfully though, I'm not worried about it breaking. So durability wise, I'm definitely giving this thing an A+. The one biggest feature it does have going for it is that it's an eyeball turner. I had so many people approach me asking what it was telling me they've seen it and always wanted to try one, and being blown away by how well it bounces. And finally, I want to say a quick thank you for watching this video. And if you haven't seen my latest video, you can check it up here in the corner, or you can watch the video that YouTube thinks you will like the best. See you guys next week.